Welcome back to another episode of Ask the Techies. I'm Dee Lee Beard, here to answer more of your viewer questions. Seems like there's a lot of dispute out there about Mac versus PC, Windows. What can Macs do? What can PCs not do? Vice versa. So I'm going to try to answer a few of those viewer questions related to that today. One of the first ones I got is, uh, ask, is it true that Mac OS X computers are hard to upgrade, unlike Windows, which is a bit easier? Um, no, that's not true. In fact, Macs are very easy to upgrade, but there's usually more complications with upgrading Windows. If you upgraded from Windows XP to Vista, it was probably better to wipe your whole computer than to try to install Vista on top of Windows XP. That's historically been a problem for Windows. Um, with the Macs, it's very common that people do just install the new update. Uh, of Mac OS 10 and it installs on top of the old one and there's not any problem with that. So that's not usually the issue. Now, if you're talking about the hardware as opposed to the operating system, Mac OS 10 versus Windows, um, Macs, depending on which model you have, are harder to upgrade. Just like some Windows PCs computers, the hardware is hard to upgrade as well. It all depends on which model you get. The Mac Pro Tower is very easy to upgrade. The iMac is easy to lay down and add extra RAM into it. Um, so the ones that are towers are usually easier to upgrade the hardware, like adding RAM, hard drive, changing your graphics card, things like that. Things like an iMac, it, you can't really change, upgrade the graphics card in it. You're stuck with whatever you've got, kind of like a laptop is. But with the tower, you do have that choice. Um, Hopefully that answers your question. Macs are usually very easy to upgrade your operating system. Uh, not, not a big issue, so I wouldn't worry about that. In fact, if anything, you'll probably have an easier time upgrading without having to wipe your entire computer. So, all right. Next question. This one comes from a YouTube viewer. It says, I just read an article that said Vista was more secure than OS X said by a security expert that hacked a Mac. Mac OS X is not any more secure than Windows Vista, this person says. There are Mac viruses, but they are very rare. Linux is probably more secure than OS X, and it is used on many servers. Um, well, to respond to that, there's a recent uh, announcement that was made um, here in April of 2009 by Kevin Turner, the Chief Operating Officer at Microsoft. And he said that Vista today, post-service pack 2, which is now in the marketplace, is the safest, most reliable OS we've ever built. It's also the most secure OS on the planet, including Linux and open source and Apple Mac OS X Leopard. Um, it's the safest and most secure OS on the planet today, Turner emphasized. Well, he's the chief operating officer at Microsoft, so I think he's probably going to say that. And he probably does believe that it is safe, and it is the safest version of Windows that has been put out that doesn't make it safe. Um, there is some debate as to which operating system is the safest. Uh, Mac OS X has some security flaws. In fact, one of them is something like this, which is with uh, Microsoft Office. If you install Microsoft products on your computer, you're going to have more problems. For instance, there was a recent update to Microsoft Office 2008, and it said this update contains improvements to enhance security and performance. In addition, this update includes fixes for vulnerabilities that an attacker can use to overwrite the contents of your computer's memory with malicious code. So still, we have a problem with Microsoft software, which does create a vulnerability for Mac. And if you avoid Microsoft software, that does make your computer safer. Uh, there are regular updates that you can do to um, software update to Mac. And when you open up that uh, setting, and Windows has automatic updates too. I recommend that you turn those on. Some people don't, and they're the ones that are more likely to have a security problem. Quite honestly, I think both Vista and Mac are fairly safe. As far as Linux being safer for servers, I'm not sure I buy that. I heard recently the Army, U.S. Army, was using Mac OS X servers uh, to do it. It says my software is up to date, and I'll click quit on that. But that's how you can check to make sure that your software is up to date. And in the control panel, under System Preferences, Software Updates right here. And then you can say Check Weekly, or you can have Check Daily or Monthly. Weekly is usually fine. Um, the, f the fact that you know there, there's no viruses out there for the Mac, that tells me that the Mac OS is safer. Now, whether that's because it's written safer, I don't, not, I'm not saying, but it is uh, safer. There are fewer viruses, Trojan horses, things like that, attacks on Mac OS X and on Linux. And I think one of the reasons for that is that they aren't as popular, either one of the operating systems. If I really want to spread something, I need to go to the easiest, the most common denominator, which is Windows, because there's more of those computers out there. Um, 
and a lot of those aren't upgraded on a regular basis because of IT uh, policies. So, um, no, I think that you're probably fine with any of them. Your biggest threat for security with your computer is falling victim to these these hacks, these these uh, phishing attempts, where someone tries to get you to send your email and pa ID and password to them. Um, that's where your biggest threat is. Don't fall for these scams where someone's trying to get your information. Uh, even somebody calls you on the phone and says, uh, yeah, I'm from IT and I want to, uh, uh, we need to fix your computer. There's a problem with your account. Apparently your computer's been sending out viruses. We can fix that for you remotely, but I need to have your password and ID and IP address for your computer and I'll walk you through those steps. If they get your IP address you, and have you turn on sharing, they can take control of your computer and then install stuff that can then maintain control of your computer. So be careful. Don't believe anything you hear and only half of what you see. That's a good rule of thumb my grandma taught me. All right, next question. Um, can you use a Mac keyboard on a PC? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the Mac keyboard is a USB keyboard and uh, it plugs in. You shouldn't have any problem. I haven't tried the Bluetooth one that Apple has, uh, but that I suspect that would probably also work. Um, yeah, there's no problem with that. You can use Apple mice on a PC and vice versa. You can use a PC mouse. The only thing you might find different is there's a com Apple, uh, there's a command key next to the space bar, and that's usually the Windows key. And sometimes on a Windows keyboard, it's the middle key to the left of the space bar. So you might have to adjust your keys a little bit. And you can do that in your system settings, your control panel settings um, to modify that. But yeah, you should be able to do that. And if you like the Mac keyboard, go for it. Um, it's a nice uh, flat keyboard, easy to type on, doesn't take up much space. Okay, last question for today. I have a Mac laptop that I initially did all my iPod music on, but recently got my PC going that has a lot more music. How can I merge the two? Right now when I plug it in, it says to reset the iPod, but I don't want to lose that music. Um, the PC will end up being my primary source. Well, there's a couple of tools out there that you can use, and I'll point those out to you. Um, one of them is if you're using a Mac and you want to get the files off of a Mac, you can use a program called Sanuti on your Mac to actually uh, get the files off of there. And uh, it used to be free. There is a, a preview, a trial, a 30-day trial that you can do if you just need to use it once. If you think you might need to use it more, you can buy for $18. And it's not a bad idea to buy it for $18. It helps support this kind of software if you can afford that. Uh, but that's a Mac program for being able to basically extract videos and songs off of your iPod so that you can then use it on another computer. I'll give you a likely scenario. I have on my iPod uh, a song that I have and I want to put it into a, a, a movie, a video that I'm creating uh, for a class. And the problem is, this, it's on my other computer, but I'm at another computer that has Final Cut Pro on it or something, and I want to pull that video off of my iPod into there. I would need a program like Sanuti. I can't just go into iTunes and take it off of that iPod. Apple does that to try to avoid copyright uh, problems. So that's what you could do for Mac. For Windows, there's a program called SharePod, and that's a program that you can use, and it is a free program that you can use. And I click on Get SharePod. Pretty straightforward. It's uh, freeware, but they do uh, offer an opportunity to make a donation. I encourage you to do that. If you don't make donations, then these people aren't going to continue to make this stuff and make it freely available. So if you can, if you like this program, make a donation. It's a nice program to be able to extract those things. All right. Uh, coming up in the uh, next week is going to be a video on how to import video into your computer that deals with analog video, that deals with digital standard definition video, and also high definition video and some of the problems associated with that. And then following that, we're going to be having a series on editing using Final Cut Pro. And when should you use Final Cut Pro? And so I'm going to try to give you a, a basics tutorial on that, how to use that so you can expand beyond some of the basic editing that you may have already been doing. All right? Thanks for watching.